this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly. In today's video, we're continuing on with the Nitron build series. Um, this will be the mainframe assembly part four. Essentially, we're just looking at the wiring and the overall layout for your servos and your flat barlet system and everything. Take in mind, guys, you can uh, you can lay this out any way you want, to be fair. Uh, there's really no right or wrong. However, there are some things that are going to be of high importance that you want to make sure you look out for. So, um, again, if you're just barely watching this, previous segments, we went over everything that we need to do up until this point. Uh, basically, with this portion of the video, I just want to kind of go over where everything's mapped out. Because what you don't want to have to do is take the machine apart at any point in time to reroute or, or change any of your wiring schematics, okay? So, um, as we talked about previously, I have this one side of the frame. This is the side with the rudder servo. It's, it's detached, right? I don't have any of the bolts or anything on. But you will notice, let's go ahead and let's turn it this way here real quick. So I've got I've got this set up in a way uh, that we talked about before, where you can actually take a, take off this one part of the frame, and you've got access to all of the internal wiring, basically of the machine. Now this would be assuming that you are mounting your fly barless system right up front. Um, you absolutely can mount it on the back tray. With it being a nitro, please take in mind that there's going to be a lot of exhaust gas and a lot of fuel. Um, that happens over flights, right, to where the helicopter gets all oily and greasy and stuff. So if you're mounting it in the back tray, you want to be very careful. Make sure it's shielded and protected. Um, it is kind of tricky to run your throttle servo all the way to the back. Um, you're probably going to have to get some servo extensions and things of that nature, okay? So since I'm going to go ahead and I'm mounting my system right up front, uh, the wiring's clean. I mean, it's nice and tight. I had to make myself somewhat of a series of, uh, of Y harnesses and what have you just because I'm using a bit of a different system. Um, and then this will be my main power lead right here. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how I'm kind of doing everything. So all I have to really worry about is my tail servo on this side. So in theory, I could just detach my tail servo, pop out all my bolts, boom. I've got access to all my wiring. Um, when I want to reassemble... I'm just going to tuck my tail servo cable back in, which I'll show you guys here in a moment, plug it in, and then I can fasten down all my bolts. Uh, but what I more or less wanted to kind of look at is is uh, just options, um, creativity. I mean, you guys, you guys can do things from using braided sleeving, um, different colors and variations of heat shrink, zip ties, um, so forth and so on. But here's kind of the way mine turned out. I I, I, uh, I pulled the majority of the wires into, I guess you'd call it, you'd call it a bit of a harness. Um, let me get a quick zoom in here. And let's kind of take a look. Um, the majority of my cables route right down the center, and I just got some of that uh, black plastic spiral protector routed everything together. And then you'll, all, you'll, you'll also notice, okay, so on, along this side here, um, since on this side of the frame I have one servo, I went ahead and did some heat shrink to protect it. And I, um, there's two cutouts here for your zip ties. Um, on this side, this wire's loose. And that is because once I mate the frames together, I'll go ahead and zip tie those. But to make sure I'm ready for it, you'll notice I've already got the heat shrink there. But if we take a closer look at the servos, right, the servo cage... What I decided to do with those is I manipulated the heat shrink, which I've got some other videos on this, but basically if you get the heat shrink on there, you heat it, you can bend it, and once it hardens or, or the heat dissipates, if you will, it'll hold its shape. So, look, at, I mean, those, those servos turned out absolutely clean. I mean, you can barely even see the wires or notice them. And then I just kind of routed them down through again, zip tied them, uh, did all that stuff. So once I close up the frame on this side, so this actually has two servos, whereas this side just has the one. Um, I'll fasten down my zip ties there. I am a Spectrum user, and I am using, of course, the Spirit 2 for this particular build. So I've got my dual satellites. Um, this was kind of a cool uh, little method that I used as well. So I, like, I've got my satellite cable here. Let me move this out of the way if we can. 
Got my satellite cables on both sides. Again, this will tuck in. But what I did also is if you look at the satellite cable, again, I, I manipulated the heat shrink and arced it. And then I've got my satellite already pre-installed. I put some heat shrink onto the antenna and then I just molded it, again, manipulated it with heat to where it sits right on top of my servo. And then again, my servo arm is going to be down here, so it's not going to be interacting with that particular satellite. And I've got one on each side, but uh, one has the antenna going forward, and on this opposing side, the antenna is going backwards. So hopefully we'll get uh, optimal um, reception or signal reception, however you want to word that. Um, so that's how that's going to go on that side, guys, once I get everything, again, made it and put back together. Um, what else is there to really look at? So um, I'm not using um, a BEC on this particular model. I'm going to go ahead and be patching just straight in with a two-cell LiPo. So I'll, of course, be getting 7.4 volts to my system. Um, and so what I went ahead and did is I made, uh, this is an XT60 series connector. Larger gauge wires up here to match my battery pack, but then I took uh, two separate servo leads, so two positives and two negatives, and what I did is I made a Y harness, and that Y harness splits off so I get a double redundancy patch uh, into my, my fly barless system and or receiver, whatever it is you guys are using. Um, so I highly recommend doing that, but again, to make sure uh, you're following all your procedures correctly, that will vary based upon fly barless systems and different receiver types. Um, and then once I get all done here in just a quick moment, this obviously will cover right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll be able to just, uh, I'm going to zip tie my, uh, my connector here. My battery pack will sit there and you, you, you know, you won't be able to see any of this. But for right now, I've got it tucked back here. Um, what else? What else we got to look at, guys? Um, let's see, the RPM sensor and everything. I mean, I guess, let's see if I can kind of pull this up. Sorry, guys, this is a hard, it's a big machine. But, so that's just kind of how everything looks. I mean, it cleans up really, really nice. The ease of maintenance. Um, I ended up putting my glow system, since I'm using the Switch, or the, I'm sorry, not the Switch Glow, the, uh, the X-Glow or Glow Pro, right back behind the throttle servo, which is perfect because um, I, I've got it set up in a way to where I can actually uh, trigger a switch on my, on my transmitter, and it'll ignite the glow. Um, if you haven't watched the X Glow Pro videos, I have. Go ahead and watch them. It shows you how to set it up and everything. Uh, but essentially, yeah, you don't need a hand glow anymore. You can just hit a switch on your transmitter. Or um, from the front, I'll actually be able to just stick my finger right underneath, and I can actually toggle. There's a, uh, a little push button on it, if you can see that. Um, I'll be able to just stick my finger right underneath if I need to and, and toggle my glow on and off. So what I'm going to do from this point, guys, get all your uh, your wires routed, make it as clean as possible. Take in mind it is a nitro machine, so there's a lot of vibrations going on. So anywhere that your wires connect frames, um, try to protect them in some way, shape, or form, whether it be heat shrink or, or uh, sticky foam, um, plastic, just whatever you got to do. Make sure that the wires can't vibrate and cut themselves uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my sides together, clean up the last little bit of my wiring. I'm going to get my battery tray on. I'm going to strap down my battery um, and kind of get it to that finished state. We'll come back from there and do a final review. And then after that, guys, we're moving on to the bottom frame, uh, the fuel tank, the motor, the tail, installing main rotor, and then we're going to be up and flying within no time. So. Let me go ahead and get everything sealed up and completed, and let's come back and do a final review. Alrighty, guys, so here it is. We have essentially the finished frame assembly with all of the electronical components assembled. Um, take in mind, of course, again, we don't got the motor or the fuel tank or anything like that in. However, at this point in time, we can move on to those steps and proceed forward with the build. Now, I just want to do a quick recap on how I decided to do mine. Again, guys, take in mind, you can do yours however you want. Um, the greatest part about having these machines is the freedom of customizing it and then setting up. But um, with being Freddy Can Fly, of course, I always try to find the absolute cleanest and most beautiful method possible. Now, we do have two wires left, which is our positive and negative. 
for our um, our glow igniter. Obviously, we can't do much with this right now because we got to wait until we have the motor installed. So I have these actually just kind of hanging out the back. Um, of course, if you guys watched all the videos and, and, and know how to do the alligator clips and all that stuff, this will be going to the glow plug, and then this guy's going to just kind of go around and um, ground down to the motor. So we'll get to these wires once we actually install the motor into the machine and the fan shroud and everything. But I got a pretty good idea for them. So for right now, I'm just kind of letting them hang out. I'm actually just kind of tucking them back here. But for the rest of it, guys, this thing turned out absolutely clean as a whistle. I mean, you, you almost can't see any wires whatsoever. So for my main pack, I've got my Pulse uh, 2550 up here. Um, used one Velcro strap. Here's something kind of cool too. So the strap that I'm using was a little bit long and what I did is I trimmed it down but also um, I just added some Velcro right here onto the frame. That way because because uh, it, it was so long that I wasn't actually getting any connectivity right here so I just added a little bit of Velcro right onto the frame. Hopefully you guys can see that. And so now I can actually strap my pack all the way down, boom, but it stops right before the post um, for the canopy. So that works out extremely nifty. Just a quick uh, tip. If you got shorter pieces of Velcro, feel free. Um, I'm not too worried about doing a double strap on it. I mean, it's, it's a very lightweight pack. It's a nitro. We're going to have the canopy on, so it's not going anywhere. Um, and then the way I did it for my batteries here... Um, I went with, again, XT60 series connectors, but this guy here just flips right forward, and you just plug straight in here, boom, and I mean, God, it's clean, it, it's absolutely, the way they sat and thought about the wiring for this blows my mind, it's, it's beautiful, um, I don't think I've really ever built a machine that's cleaner than this. Um, my satellites, if you can see on the side, so one of them has the antenna facing this way. Again, just manipulated the heat shrink. Everything looks good there. Look at that. No wires. No wires anywhere. Flip it back over to this side. Nice and clean. And then, so this, this wire hanging down here, of course, I'm using the Spirit 2 as we've talked about. Um, this will be, uh, so I can do my programming. So right now I just got it kind of rubber banded up. It'll do its whole song and dance thing over here. And then I'll eventually do all my programming. Then I can take it out. Or I was almost thinking of just kind of coiling it up up front here and leaving it plugged in. Because then I can program whenever I need to. Um, so that's still to be determined. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with that. But that's it, guys. That is the wire schematics, if you will, for the Nitron. That's how I decided to do it. Um... Let me unplug this here real quick so we're not messing up anything. Oh, um, oh also up here too. So, so taking a quick look, let's see if I can get a, a little bit of a better look at how I did my servos. Um, what I did with the heat shrink is I tucked them right underneath. Again, if you get the heat shrink hot, you can manipulate it and bend it to uh, the desired fit. And then inside, I also added heat shrink. Take in mind, you got to take the uh, the connectors off of the servo in order to do this. But it's really easy to do. I've got videos on this. But uh, double zip ties there. One side. Uh, let's see, other side. Then everything just routed right down. Let's actually do a shot underneath. Um, and see if we can see that. Um, real quick, too, on this side double servo there. I think this turned out really neat. I love, I love that. Um, for my glow ignition system, I actually was able to tuck it right behind the throttle servo. If you can see that. Um, again, like I said earlier, reason why is, again, I could still stick my finger in there and, and do a push glow if I needed to. Although mine is assigned to a switch. But if my switch ever fails or I have a signal issue or whatever, I've got my glow system right back there. Um, but you can also see, uh, let's see if we can get a bit of a zoom in on this. It's, it, I don't know if it's going to quite do justice the way I want it to, but you can kind of see right underneath where all my wiring tucks in. Um, there's a specific reason why and how I routed all of my cables. Let's get this out of the way. 
And the reason is maintenance, okay? If I ever need to uh, do maintenance on this particular machine, here's the coolest freaking thing I've ever seen. Like, and this is why I love the design of this. Um, if I were to take off my battery pack, let's say I had to uh, replace a servo, uh, or I want to install a different glow ignition system, um, just, just whatever it is we got to do, right? All I would have to do to gain access to all of my wiring is I'm going to pop these just two screws out here real quick. Yeah, bear with me here. I'll try to pop them out as fast as I can. Um, now, I haven't actually Loctited these or anything yet, guys, because, again, I'm trying to make a video here. But um, for all intents and purposes, right, if, if I were to need to gain access to my wiring, just loosen up these four screws on this tray. And this thing almost slides up like a like a hood, you know, like a car hood, right? So look at this. Pop this right up, and there you go. All you do, slide that up, and I've got access to all of the internals, all my wiring. So I mean, I, yes, of course, I could take off the bolts and I could slide out my fly barless tray. Um, I can access the wiring from the backside if I want to remove the fan shroud and the motor. Uh, but that's a lot of work, so uh, depending on if you have a crash or you need to do some maintenance or install new components or whatever, this is kind of nice. I mean, you just pop those screws off, flip your lid right open, and for the most part, you can access just about anything you need. I mean, there might be some other work involved, of course, but I love it, guys. I've built tons of nitro machines, and yes, there are bunches of them out there that are really 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 nice um, but I really feel like at the end of the day this has been the easiest and cleanest build I've ever been able to produce and that is the Nitron so um, follow me into the next series we're gonna go ahead and start to assemble the fuel tank uh, we're gonna get into installing the motor main rotor tail and then we're gonna get this bad boy out and we're gonna fly so um, Feel free to comment or subscribe to the channel. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to, to reach out to me, of course, on like Facebook or Messenger or even on the YouTube channel. Uh, and as always, my friends, thanks so much for watching. Remember, Freddy can fly, so can you.